man, this video is going to bring up so many insane memories. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Emmanuel Guzman. And today I'm going to go back in time and watch one of my favorite videos I've ever been a part of. Guarte came out in 2004. Of course, can't say anything about Guarte without mentioning our fallen brother, Jesse Erickson, because he was truly the mastermind behind this whole entire video. It was his vision, he nurtured it and put the kind of care into it that somebody who loves skateboarding and knows it and has lived it like wood and um, it shows. I love that dude dearly and miss him. So this is all shot at Corey O'Brien's bar. Back then, I think maybe it was called the Blank Club. And this is in Santa Barbara. I remember that was just kind of on this random road trip. It's a pretty well-known spot as far as I remember, but that little knobby thing right there, right, right where I'm rolling away, yeah, it was like this little steel <laughs> pipe that stuck out like two inches. So it made it kind of hectic, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then that was this pool called the Guitar Pick, kind of like Palo alto -y. And back then, you know, pools in this area, they were a little harder to come by. And that one, backside flip, I can't remember where that is. I think that's like Bakersfield or something. Um, and then this one, the front blunt at Scotts Valley, is kind of a funny story. It was a Tim Broch contest. We were in the parking lot in my buddy Maddie's minivan, just shotgunning beers. And I knew I'd wanted to front blunt the thing, but I didn't really think that, that like in the middle of a contest run would be the time I would do it. They call my name, I hop out of the van and basically put together like a flawless run. And so I had no choice. I'm like dude i gotta throw the front blunt in there i rolled in and i did the front blunt in my run and then kept the run going and continued to have a flawless run and um for whatever reason like it was the era where using a trick from a contest run if it was good like that was good so this thing was also like just some random crust we found kind of in the foothills of san jose somewhere and i remember we were just kind of wandering barging around neighborhoods stuff when we saw this crusty thing and it was super steep but i think that we were just kind of at a loss for spots at the moment and i thought yeah let's just get an ollie into this thing and jesse was always down for just hitting it even if it was just an ollie or something just like killer we're here let's get it you know and then this one's funny because this one was also on like that Southern California trip with the Santa Barbara Blunt. On the way down, we had driven by this thing and we could spot this rail off of the freeway. And even though we couldn't get a good view for it on the drive, you know, in my cocky youth, I said something about like, oh, we should stop by and hit that thing. I'll skate it, you know? <laughs> and Jesse, who was driving, took note of it. He's like, okay. And so a week later on the drive back, I get like, violently shaken awake at three in the morning kind of half hung over because we started to drink on the drive home and he shakes us awake and he's like hey we're at that spot and he's already pulling out lights and generators and i don't know what he's talking about I'm like what spot he's like that gap trail spot you wanted to skate we're here get out and i'm sitting there like what dude i'm rubbing my eyes like so <laughs> incoherent and everybody in the van was kind of asleep too so Alex Mole and Sid, they're like, damn, it's the middle of the night, man. And uh, and and Alex is trying to talk me out of it. Mole's like, Manny, you don't got to skate this thing, dude. Like, it's the middle of the night. We're dead asleep, mate. And I remember Jesse, you know, once again, just being him, like, he called me. I said something to the effect of like, well, you said you wanted to skate it. Well, we're here, like, skate it. And I, I just knew, like, there's no, ch there's no worth in arguing these matters. It's better to just huck yourself down and eat shit for him, at least. I was just his kind of grotto, like, don't talk if you're not going to walk, you know, yeah. I'm pretty sure I ate shit like a couple of times, but I think I did it pretty quick. It may have been first try. I don't remember, honestly, this spot. So that's a pretty well-known spot. Actually, it's in South San Jose. It's at this high school and everybody skates this big four block. Mm -hmm. There was this, the other side of this school where like nobody skated it really because the runway was short. You had to run and throw down. And so it's like a short runway spot, but you can't really see it in the footage. It's a big ass five block. Mm -hmm. But I just thought the short runway kind of made it cool. Cause like it's, it was way harder to just run and throw down. You can kind of see like where it starts at that wall. Dude, this spot's pretty sacred actually. That spot, I don't think will probably ever be skatable with the last couple of years storms. But this was a spot that I really wanted to get something at because it's, it's here in Santa Cruz and Capitola. And I had gone there and I had shot a photo of it with Tony Vitello like a couple months before that. I had kick flipped it and shot a photo with him, which I wonder where that is, man. That'd be cool to see. Honestly, I got to hit him up. I remember the kick flip was kind of hectic because there's a big crack. And then this place, all my NorCal heads know what's up. That's ripping. And like, 
Ripon was kind of one of the first big scale concrete parks built in the area. It's probably most famously known from all the Cardiel footage. And I love that place. And then this is a spot called Uvis. This is this pretty remote ditch. So I, I knew that there were a couple of things that I could do from the top ropes. So, you know, one of my favorite go-tos, a little half cab flip. That's a loading dock in San Jose. This is uh, behind that Rocky Balboa Museum in Philadelphia that's just behind the building. And I just thought it was a sick spot to get something. And that was an option. I was like, cool. We were lurking in Philly with Damian Smith. So did you or did you not run up the stairs like Rocky when you were there? Oh, for sure. You have to. You have to. And then this is a hometown clip again. That one's cool right there because I don't know if they're being called on us or not, but you can see the highway patrol rolling by right as I roll away. And I always like that clip. because It was just like, boom, in your face, sucker. Heel. fakey heel flip i don't do them very often but i used to love to i kind of just learned those that's in new york and this is at another well-known spot but everybody skates it the other way and so we were just cruising through the city one night and this was literally one of those like drive-by like here film this real quick that's port orford that's like the first cradle ever built so kind of unlocking the upside down realm was still just exciting to to see and do i must have done that right there like 50 times that night i don't know how they picked which one to use and then that one another sacred derby clip dude the funny story about this one is that the front side flip like melon is in my sponsor me video and and it was filmed so ghetto but i knew that i could do it again i did it a few times just to get the right one that we like and little did we know the gap would be gone soon but this is another kind of central cal gem FDR. That was my first time into FDR, and I'm pretty sure this was filmed in a line, but I, I think that he just wanted to use the single trick. But yeah, I fell in love with that place on my first visit. It was so just incredible and gnarly and huge. Uh, this one's funny. This is just, again, like looking for spots. It was just this big ass stack, and we didn't know what to do. And we had this skinny piece of wood. And I'm like, well, I'll all into that piece of wood on the truck down the stack how about that and that's in arizona i think this one's cool because this one was on that east coast trip but the homie ricky espinoza he towed me in on a bike so you can see ricky right there mm -hmm. peeling off to the right i remember i cut my hand on some broken glass because like it was a nasty spot there was a bunch of dog shit and like, broken glass everywhere you can see the blood all over my shirt yeah yeah I had sliced my hand. I kept wiping it on my shirt, but I ran that outfit for like two more days because I was so pumped on that Ollie. I went out that night actually and ended up getting mugged. That was not dope. And then that's Uvis again. That was like another uh, trip out there, maybe even the same day. Actually, I think it's pretty hectic now that I think about it. I think that spot's actually pretty buck. I mean, this was another cool pool, Sananella. I know it's just like a little lip slide over the light, but for me, I was just learning to kind of unlock pool skating and it was just a fun session with the homies and then that one's here in santa cruz at the harbor and then this one was here in santa cruz just down the street from where i live a little pole jam jesse loved pole jams so he was always down to film a pole jam and then this backside flip is in capitola and this is like probably never gonna be skatable again because of the storms but another sacred santa cruz spot for us kind of and you front side flipped it in the trans world video on film? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Homie Warren built this box. He built it specifically like to go and skate Uvis. And we had to haul that thing in there and it probably weighed like 120 pounds. It was super sturdy and built well, but we had to haul that in, haul it over the fence, switch back 180. And that's Daily City Ramp. And I think that was on this little stint of like skating with Karma Tasha. And I remember like I was so inspired and so like starstruck to be skating with one of my favorite skaters. Uh, that's a cool spot. I think it's all fenced off now. Old train station. But I like that spot. Yeah, that's the East Bay School. And it's this like double set. I think it's kind of hood in there. But either way, we were just in and out. And like we ran into some deluxe heads, ran into Morford. So we all went there and we didn't have a photographer anyways. That's how we used to roll back then. Like so many of the clips in here don't have photos because you were just in the moment, right? But Morford was like, yeah, let's go. And he ended up shooting a photo and it made it in a slide interview that i had so i was always really hyped on that uh that was a cool spot someone hacked the rail away made it into a gap that's an that interesting trick that. dude yeah i just kind of unlocked those and i wanted to do it down something pretty big that one had just learned backsmiths thanks to the homie wes tanaskia from sj and this was the only photo that i ever shot with brian gaberman he ended up coming out and shooting this photo and it's like one of my favorite photos ever like i just really always valued that moment in time the photo like got ran you know back then it was not a matter of trick being gnarly so much as it was like the aesthetics uh, this one was really like pretty special to me too because uh i was living in sf with some friends at the time more or less couch surfing and i remember on a couple of occasions like sliding good like standing up on it but then like almost clipping my dome on the wall so you kind of had to 
skirt away from the wall if you were going to take it to the end, which you kind of had to because it's like a long set, you know? Ah, yes, Burnside, baby. This is, you know, another like really meaningful kind of moment in time to me and like trick more or less, but more so the moment in time. This was on a trip with Navarrete and he had basically been trying to resurrect Creature, which at the time had like been dissolved. And like, it was my first time ever to Burnside, right? It was kind of like getting cold, wintry and Antihero was premiering their video Tent City there that night. And so I remember there was like a huge party and it was wild. You know what I mean? But that session was like one of the most memorable sessions of my life because I was stepping into the arena with all the locals in like the gnarliest setting. And I remember people there at that time, like if you were going to jump in on a sesh like that, like they weren't going to tolerate some lackluster skating. Like you needed to be giving it your all. And so I remember just skating my heart out at that session in that moment i gained the respect of a few of the local dudes and then you know even after like i was left kind of to get back home for a couple of days like invited me to stay at their houses and shit like we're talking true hospitality from some of the gnarliest dudes Um, and so after a few days had passed i was like yo i want to go film these tricks do you think it's cool because back then it wasn't just like okay to show up with like cameras and fucking Mm-hmm. start filming and it was only my second time there really and they were like hell yeah dude if you want to go do that like yeah that's cool like let's go skate burnside you know i really valued that place as well and wanted mm-hmm. to show like my respects by getting something there you know people will recognize that because it's just in miles Silvis's last part right switch 360 flip but this is like the bush street gap and it's a big old street gap you know and i had front side flipped it before but i never filmed it i had shot a photo with uh, jai tanju and mark whiteley so there was two angles but either way dude something happened where like the footage didn't come out or the camera died anyways I had to come back a second time and film it right this time i'm filming with anthony clairval i'm about to make the trick he's telling me yo dude like a couple more tries and my battery's about to die I make it right away and I come back up the hill, like so elated, you know, I'm just glowing and the look on his face just said it all. And sure enough, his camera died right as I rode, rode up to the thing. Two times now, undocumented, right? And I'm like, oh my God, this is ridiculous, dude. But that's kind of how skateboarding was too. Like sometimes things happen back then and you just had to abide by going back and getting it if you really wanted to use it. And so we went back another time and while I'm running up to it, this pedestrian came walking out of this like alleyway and I was hauling ass nowhere to go. I had no choice, but to just fuck full blown, like embrace tackle him, you know? And so we go flying and I tried to help take the brunt of the impact. Cause I knew that like someone was going to get hurt. I couldn't hold him the whole time. He went flying my way. I went flying my other way. You know, he got up and was just like, in tears um and he was calling the cops he was gonna sue me all this crazy jargon and i felt bad because i had just laid this dude out you know what i mean yeah. I just, like just flatten this dude and he wanted to fight me and i'm like oh my god how can i fight you right now anyways this big dude from across the street who's witnessing the whole thing like he saw that it was an accident and that like granted i was at fault it was an accident and so he comes and runs across the street and gets in the way and intervenes and basically tells the dude, look, I saw the whole thing, man. It was an accident. He didn't mean to like, you need to calm down all this shit. And then he tells me, run, run, take off. I got you. So we left and, um, and then we came back the next day. And then the next day we finally filmed it and got it. And uh, it was, uh, it was another hectic sesh, even though I got the front side flip, I was skating it with Van Wastel this session and his board shot out and hit this really nice mercedes so again that day everybody had to flee the scene again and then we came back and got the trick and then he came back and got his too soon after because I, I saw the footage it was so sick but um rest in peace van that was a dope sesh there it is the blank club i think it was a little cameo i remember Corey o'brien was like nervous about having me in there because I was way underage. And this is the first time I ever met like a bunch of people too during the filming of this. Like I had never met Eric Dressen or Steve Olson and like Salba, all these crazy people that were in there, all the cameos, Boy Grasso, like doing that scene. Sick. But, yeah. It was my first official part for Santa Cruz. I had had a crux part that came out before this in Blown Out, but this was like the first official Santa Cruz part that I filmed. Um, Did you know you were going to have last part or was that a surprise? No, that was a surprise. It was was pretty neat, man. It definitely catapulted my, my life in a lot of ways. I'm always grateful for that.
thank you everybody for watching one of my favorite videos of all time that i've been a part of santa cruz's guarte we love this era in skateboarding loved all the people in this video was honored to be in it and um appreciate everybody listening to me rant and just you know these memories going down memory lane with joe yeah i appreciate it it's something that's near and dear to me so thank you for watching and listening hope you enjoyed it hope to see you in the future again doing more of these <laughs>